Proxmox is a popular virtualization software used by many home labbers for various reasons. One such reason is it's freely available to the community. Proxmox is a collection of open source virtualization technologies that are available in Linux. And they created a nice uh, little web interface so you can manage all your containers and virtual machines and all the networking and storage and all those sorts of things that go along with it. I thought I'd do a video on the networking aspects of Proxmox because I do a lot of videos on networking. And these concepts can be used if you want to virtualize, say, OpenSense or if you just want to run various VMs and containers. So right now I'm on the summary page of Proxmox and we're going to go to the network page that's under the system heading here. And you'll see a list of all your networking devices and any bridges and stuff that you have configured. I have several network interface cards installed on my computer. I sort of had some extra ones and I just kind of threw them all in my machine here, but I'm actually using them now for different various purposes to test various VMs and put stuff on different networks. So it's actually nice to have a lot of this, you know, a lot of networking on my virtualization server because it gives me a lot of freedom to try different experiments and to set up just my main network uh, some of the services and apps that I have running on there. So first of all, when you look at your list of networking devices, the first things that are listed are your physical interfaces. And these usually start with like EMP um, and have like a number and you know, some letters and numbers after that. And they stand for different various things depending on the type of physical network interface that you're using. And you'll see that I have quite a few. I actually have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight interfaces, network interfaces on here. Um, so the I'll start with this one. This is, I call it my 1G management network interface. It's nice you can put comments over here so you can actually uh, know what they're used for. But this is basically the network interface card that is built onto my motherboard. So it just has a one gig NIC in it. It's just a consumer grade motherboard, uh, AMD Ryzen system. And I have a 2.5 gig network card in there, so I can test that out and for higher speed interfaces. And I have a one gig four port interface card here that I'm using for some VMs. And finally, I have a two port 10 gigabit SFP plus network interface card. And I'm using them for two different purposes here. So the physical interfaces you can use directly on your Proxmox host, which most of the time you're going to want to use, do everything in your bridges uh, for your containers and VMs. But there are some things which are exceptions which you need to, to make use of on your, net, on your host, such as where I have this network interface here, this 10 gigabit interface, I actually have an IP address assigned to it because this interface is actually attached to my 10 gigabit storage network that's an isolated VLAN on my network switches and it doesn't have access to the internet. It's not even configured on my OpenSense box at all. So that way I ensure that none of that traffic gets passed up to the router and has any opportunity to leave that network. So it's all contained in that VLAN and it's perfect for having a couple different systems that I wanna directly connect on a single network to have pure 10 gig performance. I can enable jumbo frames for all the devices on that network and I can get the maximum 10 gig performance without routing all that traffic through the firewall, which is a good idea if you just need quick uh, storage network for your for all your servers and devices on your network. So I notice I don't have any bridges defined for this uh, interface because I'm not putting any containers or uh, VMs on that network. I'm just using it just for storage purposes because in Proxmox, if I go to data center, you'll see that I have some storage options here and I actually can create uh, various storage options, like if I want to connect to an NFS share or um, you know Samba share as well. Um, some of these things over the network, I actually do that for some of these storage backends, and I'm using them for ISO images, uh, container templates, um, backup files, and those sorts of things if I want to do that over the network. I'm not using it for storage for my containers or VMs. I'm storing those locally on my Proxmox system, but I like to offload any of the other files that aren't containers or VMs to some devices on my network. I actually even have a Proxmox backup server set up as well over that 10 gig network connection. So you can set up different servers, services like that and, and have different purposes of why you need to set this up on your Proxmox host devices. So let's go back to um, the networking page here. So that's why you might want to use the physical interface and actually assign an IP address directly on that interface. For everything else you want to do, you'll just want to assign a Linux bridge to those devices and you can use it in different ways. 
So in this video, I'm going to focus mostly on the Linux bridge and bonds in addition to these physical interfaces here. Um, I haven't really found a great need for a Linux VLAN because you can actually uh, set VLAN on your bridges. So I will go and explain that later. There might be a good use case for having a Linux VLAN on top of a bridge here that you want to have it separate, maybe for devices that aren't VLAN aware. Uh, on your network possibly, but I've found that I could do everything that I need to do on my network for my purposes for my home lab, just using Linux bridges and bonds and um, the physical interfaces. So by default, Proxmox creates a bridge on the management interface because uh, if you only have, especially if you only have one network interface, because they, they're assuming you're gonna put some containers and VMs on that network interface, but you don't technically need to use the bridge, but I just leave it because I didn't have to change it and get rid of it and use that interface directly. It doesn't hurt anything. So for all of my other interfaces, I actually have bridges assigned for them. So as you can see, this is this is my one gig interface card. I called it 1G uh, one through four, just so I know, and I call it VM, so I know it's my bridge interface from VMs. And I basically put created one for each, each physical interface. So actually, I, I can actually have four physical ports assigned to my OpenSense virtual machine. So it's just like having a one of those mini PCs built into my you know, Proxmox server. And I'm using bridges instead of passing through the hardware because I'm not worried about maximum performance because I'm just testing out various scenarios. So because Linux bridges and stuff do reduce performance a little bit compared to using the native inter, you know, physical interfaces. But I have the flexibility if I use bridges to be able to assign multiple VMs and containers can share that same interface. So, you know, you're going to lose performance the more you share those interfaces, but the flexibility of being able to assign those to anything I want to use is very convenient. If I have multiple VMs or containers that aren't like running OpenSense, but are just actual apps and stuff, it works perfectly fine having multiple um, devices assigned to the same bridge because you're putting them on the same network essentially, right? To know which physical interface these bridges are assigned to, you can actually see the ports, they call them ports slash slaves here, uh, but basically this is the name of this physical interface that's up here. So whenever you create a new Linux bridge, and I'll show you here, you actually, in the bridge ports, you actually can list out, uh, use any of these names that are over here for your physical interfaces. So that's how you can tell which ones are associated to physical network interfaces for your bridges. You'll notice that there are, I have a few bridges here that actually don't have any uh, interface assigned to them. And that's actually perfectly okay because this is now just a virtual uh, bridge that's not associated to any physical interfaces. So you can actually assign multiple VMs and containers to say, let's say VBMR7 and they will actually be on that same virtual network. So this is how you can actually associate devices to virtual networks. Yeah, so let's say we're running OpenSense and I assigned OpenSense this, this VBMR7, like let's go over here to my OpenSense box. You'll see that I'm using VB, VBMR2, seven, four, and nine. So uh, this VBMR7 is actually a virtual interface and not a phys real physical interface, uh, bridge to a real interface. So because of that, that means anything that I assign to this virtual interface here will actually be on that network, which is actually pretty cool because this allows me when I'm running, say, a Linux machine here, and I'll show you, uh, this Linux machine, I'm actually connected to my OpenSense virtual machine on that virtual network interface. It's not attached to a real interface. So that's actually pretty cool that I can actually uh, make use of that. Um, so let's go back to here. So now we talked about that. And you'll notice that there are a couple interfaces here that I have that are actually marked as VLAN aware. So if you actually want to create VLANs with whatever software is using that bridge, you can actually create VLANs in there. So since I'm using OpenSense on this box and I'm using this, the first one for the WAN interface and I'm using the second interface for a management interface, which has no VLANs. And I'm using the third one as my interface that contains all my VLANs, kind of similar to how I actually set my physical boxes up. I actually make it VLAN aware. And so I can actually create VLANs in OpenSense on my virtual machine and connect a network switch or I can connect virtual machines up to it as well. But I can connect the physical network switch there if I want. And I can actually plug devices into the physical network switch and it will actually be on the, appro the appropriate VLAN which is actually pretty cool. So making this VLAN aware, you can actually connect a network switch to it that has VLANs on it uh, and assign it to the appropriate networks. I actually have another interface up here that I'm actually connected to my Proxmox, uh, uh, call it Proxmox apps. This is where I put all my virtual machines and containers for most of my network. So what I, what I can actually do with this, another use of 
having this be in VLAN aware is I can actually go to a um, container and actually see that I'm actually using VBMR1 and actually, actually can put the VLAN tag right in here. And so I can immediately assign these devices to their own networks just from the configuration that's in here. And because basically I have that interface, let me show you here, I actually have VBMR1. This interface is connected to a network switch um, that has a trunk port basically with all the VLANs on it. So I can actually assign containers and apps to any network that I want on my network, which is really cool. One other thing I wanna show you is if you can go to create a Linux bond, this is how you can do LACP if you wanna do make a lag connection and you can actually put in multiple network interfaces under the slaves box here. You can just basically type it in and put a space between each one of these devices and you can assign them to a basically a link aggregation group and once you create this bond, you can actually create a bridge, a Linux bridge on top of that bond. And you, you, you can use them just exactly the same way as you use other bridges, but you're actually using, making use of two interfaces or more instead of just a single interface. So that's actually pretty cool. You had the flexibility to create bonds. I did that at one point in time, but I'm actually not doing that currently. And, but it works pretty well. And you have to set your network switch up as well to make use of LACP on the network switch. So last thing I wanna do is I wanna demonstrate how you can actually change the network interface of a running virtual machine and you actually you can be on another network right away without actually have to reboot the system, which is actually really cool that you can do this. And this actually works with, with uh, OpenSense as well because since you're virtualizing those and bridging those interfaces, you can swap that out at any point in time and, and do move things around. What I actually like to do sometimes, like if I look good at my hardware for my OpenSense, I, sometimes I'll switch this from a real physical interface to a, a a virtual interface, a virtual bridge that I use, just so I can test a virtual machine that's on my Proxmox system instead of testing out a real machine. So sometimes I wanna test out real machines behind the virtual machine, and sometimes I wanna test out VMs. So uh, I, I could actually just swap this out with a real interface, and it actually works. But what I'm gonna to do to actually show this, I'm gonna to go to this one. Right now, I'm using VBMAR7, which is the management interface on OpenSense. So you'll see that I'm actually connected at, you know, if I look at my IP address, it's, you know, dot one, dot 100, because that's on my management network. So I'm going to actually change this to a different um, network. If I go to my network device, I want to switch it to, let's say my lab network. So if I hit okay on this, this one doesn't have a, a VLAN, but it's actually a separate physical interface. It's on its own network, but it still demonstrate the fact that I can change the network that my device is on. So let's go back to the console here. And I need to, I will need to refresh the connection because if I, if I just do this, it, oh, actually, it actually picked it up right away. So that's how cool this is. Sometimes you might have to refresh your DHCP lease or something like that. But as you can see, I'm immediately on the 110 uh, network, 110.125 is my IP address now. So I just switched it just like that. I just changed what network this virtual machine is now running on. So th that's actually really cool that you can do that. That's something I, uh, I discovered that you can actually do with a running machine. So, so you actually don't have to restart the machine or do anything crazy. I, since I'm using DHCP, I didn't even have to change my network settings. So that's really, really cool. So I hope you, this video helps kind of show you a little bit how to use the Proxmox interfaces a little bit more and more detail and when you might want to use them and not use them in various different situations. And I hope that little quick demonstration at the end actually shows you how cool and powerful it is to be able to swap out your interfaces on the fly to be able to do uh, testing very quickly. If you just want to try stuff out in your different networks, you're not actually building physical machines and swapping out physical hardware or swapping network cables or anything like that. You can actually just swap it all virtually in the you know Proxmox virtual machine environment, which is very, very cool. So until next time, I hope you guys have a great day.